Hey brothers and sisters, Dominic Lucero. I'm the instructor here for Bola Makers Local Lodge 549 in Pittsburgh, California. And I wanted to do a follow-up video uh, based on the tape measure and measurements video that we did last time. Uh, and I wanted to take the time to really describe decimal equivalence. Um, decimal equivalence to fractions are just another piece of the story. It's important to realize that there's kind of three different languages whenever it comes to uh, fractions and measurements and stuff like that. And especially when it comes to complex math, uh, when we're doing large measurements or small measurements and we're multiplying, dividing, uh, even subtraction and addition with fractions and measurements, uh, they can get a little bit unruly at times. Uh, so me personally, how I do this out in the field is all my fractions automatically get converted uh, to decimal uh, equivalents most of the time. And it just makes a lot of that math easier because I don't have to deal with finding the least common denominator and Ill, um, improper fractions and trying to turn them back. Uh, so I want to go through and describe this language for you. And this seems uh, to lose a lot of people because it's outside of the realm of what we're really used to dealing with. And honestly, it kind of closely follows the metric system. So one important thing I want to talk about right off the bat is most measurements are going to be described in thousands. Um, and all that means is, let's say we have 500 over 1,000. So what we're saying is we have 1,000 holes, or we have four decimal places. So at the top, it's 500. It's only three decimal places. We have 500 thousands. And that's just the language that we're going to speaking, uh, be speaking with measurements whenever it comes to turning fractions into decimals. So one thing, one way I like to really think of this, I think it's an easy transition. Uh, I like to think of this in terms that we all like, money. If we looked at this as one whole dollar and all of this was the cents or the change that made up a full dollar, it makes it a lot easier. So I kept the same exact drawing up from the last video we did. I dropped lines down and we're gonna do their decimal equivalents on the bottom. So keeping with the mentality of uh, this is one whole dollar. If you have half a dollar, you would have 50 cents. So our half inch is the equivalent to 0 0.50, or if we're working in, um, place numbers of thousands, and it's going to be 0 0.500. And really, that's just for accuracy's sake. Uh, and it, in my mind, is more of a whole number to have three decimal places to work in, in units of thousands. So if you think about it, if we had 50 cents, that, that we would have half a dollar. Uh, if we had half of 50 cents, we would have one quarter or 25 cents. So one quarter is the equivalent to 0.25. Now it starts getting a little bit easier. Um, if I had three quarters, three quarters of an inch, or literally three 25 cent quarters in my pocket, I would have 75 cents. So three quarters is equal to 750 thousandths, 0 0.750. So that's the easy stuff. Um, and we can break it down even smaller uh, if we just continuously divide things in half. So if we look at the quarter inch and we're trying to find half of 25, well, I know half of 24 is 12, add another half onto that 12, 12 and a half would give me 25. So one eighth, is half of one quarter, which must mean that one eighth is 0.125, or what we would call one half. And the proper way to express that term is 125 thousandths. And I think a very useful um, mentality to have whenever we're talking about this stuff is especially with welding. The rule of thumb for welding is we need to use one amp for every thousandth of an inch thick. So if you're using one eighth stick, stick rod, 
Uh, we want to use one amp for every thousandth of an inch thick, and we have 125 thousandths, so about 125 amps. It's a really good place to start whenever you're welding carbon steel um, E7018 rod. It'll get you in the ballpark. Is it exact? Not always, but it'll get you close. So if we keep dividing it even more and we divide this in half, so we know we have 12 and a half is half of a quarter, but half of an eighth is a 16th. So what would we need to add up to 12 and a half if we divided it by two? And half of 12 and a half is going to be a six and a quarter. 0 0.0625 is how it would be expressed here. And we'll just leave it at 0 0.062 to stay in the thousands. Uh, we can move into ten thousands ranges. Uh, it just it's easier to get an accurate idea. But for this example, we'll just stick with sixty-two thousandths of an inch is equal to one sixteenth. And just based on these uh, numbers right here, we can figure out everything else. So if we had one eighth and we were moving to three sixteenths. All we would need to do is add 62 thousandths to uh, 125 thousandths. Now it becomes simple addition. Now, do I really expect that you're going to go through and do that in the field and start, instead of uh, having to switch to improper fractions, do your math and then switch it back to proper fractions? Are you really going to sit there and try to figure out 62 plus 125 as a substitute? Not necessarily. Not that you can't, not that it's not helpful. Uh, it's just not always applicable. So there's a cheat code for this. I was a kid in the 90s. I played a lot of video games. Big fan of cheat codes. So if we wanted to figure out what the decimal form of any of these fractions is, it's very simple. So to find out for 3 sixteenths, we're going to need to divide 3 by 16 which is a little bit unusual for a lot of people um, because that looks like improper math. But when you take a look at it, we have 16 holes and we only have three of those holes in this measurement. So we're trying to find out how many times does 16 go into three and it's not going to give us a whole number. Um, so that's a really easy way to be able to do this out in the field for some of those measurements that aren't quarter inch three quarters of an inch, half inch, or even one eighth. You can just simply divide the numerator by the denominator and it'll give you that number. So uh, I know off the top of my head that 3 sixteenths is 0.1875. And we'll just stick with 187 thousandths for this one. So the other language, because now we have two languages here. So we have our fractions, we have our measurements in thousandths of an inch, but really what we're saying is it's also percentages. Half inch is 50% of a full inch. One quarter is 25% of a full inch. Three sixteenths is 18.7% of a full inch. And if you look at it, it really starts to make sense at that point. One eighth is 12 and a half percent of a full inch. And that's really the language of measurements that we're looking for. So really it's good practice to learn to divide the numerator by the denominator. It will help move you through very quickly. But my hope is that when you work with these numbers on a regular basis, it starts becoming second nature. Um, your math will be one far, far more accurate. Uh, second, it's going to be a lot easier, in my opinion, a lot less prone to mistakes and accidents. Because when you start doing improper fractions, if you multiply the whole number by the denominator and you forget to add the numerator, um, your whole entire measurement for the rest of it is, gonna, is not going to be correct. It's going to be messed up. So moving right down the line, once again, if we divided 5 by 16, also we could see that we're going to be... 1 16th past a quarter inch. So if we added 6.0625 to 25, I'll go ahead, and go ahead and do that for an example real quick. 0 
we'll put a zero on there. That becomes five. That becomes one, one. So, and we see that we have 0 0.315. Oh, I apologize. That's supposed to be a two. I knew something about that measurement wasn't right. Because 5 sixteenths is 0 0.3125. So now we have 0.312 or 31.2% of a full inch. Three eighths, and that's an easy one to remember. I don't know why, it just makes sense to me. Three eighths, if you divide, um, three by eight, you're gonna get 0.375, and it's about 37 and a half percent. So if anything, really, I hope that you remember the eighths. And I understand if it's a little bit difficult to get all the way down to the 16th. It is extremely helpful though. So we have 375 thousandths of an inch, 37 and a half, percent of a full inch or 0 0.375 3 so 7 sixteenths is going to be 0 0.062 underneath 500 so that gives us 0 0.437 9 sixteenths is 0 0.062 over one half which is going to give us 562 Right, you just put that six and that two right in there, and it slides right into place for nine sixteenths. Five eighths is another um, another key one. Like I said, I, I really want you guys to at least remember the eighth inch uh, mark. So one two five three seven five five eighths is going to be six two five seven eighths is eight seven five. In 11 sixteenths, really a lot of times, uh, fraction-wise and also decimal-wise, uh, the one place a lot of people get messed up is between 11 sixteenths and 13 sixteenths. So 11 sixteenths, we're going to add another sixteenth to 625. So 625 plus 62, or 0, 062, gives us 7, 8, 6. Or 6, 8, 7, 5 is the full number uh, when you do it in uh, 10 thousandths of an inch. We're back to our three quarters, which is 750 thousandths. And I think in my mind, this is why I can rationalize in my head where these fractions all fit into place uh, because I also see them, I see them both at the same time. I, I can see them in my head as decimal form and as fraction form, right? So three quarters of an inch is 75% of a full inch, 750 thousandths. I know 11 sixteenths is just below three quarters, which is why I know it's, if we looked at it as just regular numbers, 687 and it comes before 750, 13 sixteenths is 0.812. Seven eighths, um, I just have in my head, it has the numbers in it instead of seven eight or 780 thousandths, it's eight seven five. And really all we have to do is add 125, <clears throat> excuse me, 125, to 750, and that gives us our 0.875. And lastly, 15 sixteenths is 0.9375. So, do I want you guys to memorize these things? It couldn't hurt, um, but it's not necessarily about memorization, because memorization is not education. Um, so really, I, I want you to understand the principle of it. If you need to pull out your calculator and you need to divide the numerator by the denominator and that starts getting you in the working knowledge of them, I think that's all to the good. Um, 
we're not always working on tape measures and that's what the next couple of videos are about which is why i wanted to go over this first before we got into that if we're working with very effective tools such as calipers um, you have to know how to read fractions in decimal equivalents otherwise it's not going to work um, not only that the english imperial system of uh, standard measurements a lot of times it doesn't make sense um, we did kind of take these arbitrary distances and put fractions onto them uh, in my personal opinion the metric system makes, makes way more sense we don't deal with fractions at all it's all in, in points and decimals um, so i truly believe that once you get used to the language of this it's a far easier language to use for math uh, for layout um, for fabrication all of it so i highly suggest you at least work with the eighths the ace will take you a long way and you can figure out your way around uh, most math equations just knowing that alone so i hope this was helpful if you ever have any questions please stop at the training center i'm happy to sit down with you also uh, you can find these decimal equivalents online if you just type in decimal equivalents you can print out a sheet and it'll have it right there with you uh, we all know quarters i believe we can all know ace and hopefully uh, you can be pretty slick and remember the 16th as well so i hope you get the education you deserve thank you